Woohoo! It's Luhu. Hi everybody, it's Cindy Young back for another floss tube. And I'm doing it from my stitchy spot today. And so I'm gonna try, I'm bouncing a little bit because I just have my computer sitting on my lap and I'm recording from my computer. I hope this works. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I'm going to try and show you my stitchy spot without making you nauseated. I hope that's okay. So I'm gonna pick up my computer and first of all, I'm going to go this way. You can see behind me, I have Tweet Hearts. And this is my Barrelex lamp that has three settings. I'm not gonna turn it on because it might blind you, but the really nice part is it has a metal pole so I can stick all my needle minders on it. And um, my recliner creates so much static that the threads are often uh, at a horizontal attitude instead of, you can kind of tell, I think you can kind of see that they're just sort of flying out there all on their own. Um, this is, you can kind of see back here, um, right here, that's my whip basket. This is my ort jar, um, which unfortunately has a lot of frogging in it, <laughs> but I figure orts, are, orts is orts, right? And right there, I'm sorry, you have to excuse the mess. That one pile is everything I want to show you today. That's kind of my little table that I use, but it's also uh, an accordion, wooden accordion sewing basket. And so that's where all my DMC threads are. Um, I'm not gonna try and undo that. Okay, um, and then to this side of me, I have this little table, but it's all full of stuff and I'm kind of embarrassed to show you. <laughs> and then here's my, my recliner. And this is where I sit and I stitch. And that's my dining room back there. And we actually live in an open floor plan house. So that's not really a dining room, it's a dining area. And then over that way is the kitchen. Anyway, so if you live in an open floor plan, you probably get it. Um, okay, so first of all, I want to just say hello again, and thank you to all your for all your comments. Thank you for your views. I really appreciate it, and for the thumbs up that some of you left and because I know sometimes you're watching on a device where it's kind of hard to give a thumbs up. If I'm watching on my TV, which is right in front of me, it's kind of hard to give a thumbs up unless I go in separately on my phone or on my computer and do it. So I appreciate all the thumbs up. Yay, thank you so much. All right, um, I'm going to start with my whip and I'm going to have uh, I'm not going to pause because I'm doing this. It's weird. I'm not going to try and explain it. But here we go. Here. So I really only have one whip that I've been working on this month since I spoke with you last. And that's this. And I haven't even gotten a whole lot done on this because I've been working on Luhu Stitches projects. But I did manage to get this whole red motif part down here done and some more red up on the top here done. Although I'd be hard pressed to tell you what it looked like before. <laughs> anyway, but I, I know I didn't have this completed the last time I showed it to you and I got that almost done. There's still some pink I need to put in there. And this is from Avli, Avlia uh, West. Her last name is West, and I'm blanking on her first name. Anyway, and this is, I'm sorry for the glare. That's what it's going to look like. There we go. That's better. You can kind of see. Anyway, it's a really enjoyable one, and it's on, I think the fabric is called Makini. And it's a real open weave 
even weave. And I, I believe she imports it from Greece. So when I was talking to her, she does a lot of importing from Greece because she also does embroidery um, for vestments for the Orth Eastern or, or Greek Orthodox Church. Her husband is a Greek Orthodox priest. And um, yes, in Orthodox tradition, priests can marry, just so you know. Uh, anyhow, so she does the vestments for priests in the Greek Orthodox Church. And if you follow her on Instagram, and I will link that here below, um, you can see some pictures of some of the things that she does, and it's just amazing. I, it's, the, it's beautiful needlework. It goes beyond cross-stitch or anything else. So anyway, that's my one of my one and only whip because, because I have been working on a little... project for you all and I couldn't figure out how to finish it so I just sort of have it pinned to <laughs> some uh, I want to say foam core board but that's not it mat mat board and actually it's probably hot press drying board um, anyhow every heart beats true for the red white and blue this is stitched over two on 28 count white Lugana that I tea dyed. And I did a pretty quick tea dye because I didn't want this to be really dark. And I'm also kind of shy of too many blotchy things in mine. So you can kind of see one here. And there's a little bit right there. And there's some over here. Anyway, this is all DMC except this is a classic color works Cupid, which I, in my notes on the pattern, I say I highly manipulated, which is when I came to a lighter section, I moved over to the lighter section, or I thought of ways to be in the right place when I, um, when I got to those and I I didn't didn't just go back and forth. I didn't want a stripey effect. Anyhow, that's that's every heart beats true for the red, white, and blue. It is available in three select uh, brick and mortars right now. Um, you can go to Calco, Calco Rose Quilt Shop, Farmer's Attic on Etsy. I need to write this down. Farmer's at it because I got to remember to uh, make a note in the <laughs> below so you can find it. Farmer's Attic. Oh, I knew I was going to forget it because I don't have it written down. I couldn't find this morning. I went to look for my regular notebook. Couldn't find it. And um, so Calico Rose, Farmer's Attic. Oh, and Stash LLC, which Stash and Farmer's Attic are both on Etsy. So since I um, mentioned them, I've got to write them down. They are all on my auto ship and they get my new releases two weeks before everybody else. Um, and two weeks before I put them in my shop. I might release this just a few days earlier because of Memorial Day on Monday. So I might, this might be a Memorial Day release, at least in my shop. And then I will be sending this to my distributors on Friday, May 31st. So anyway, here's the pattern booklet. And it's a it's a it's more than my usual two pages because it's a hundred and what did I say? 128 stitches wide by 83 stitches high. So in order to give you a good chart to look at. I had to um, print the chart on two separate pages. Um, my cat is meowing to come in and my daughter is in the back of the house. So eventually, hopefully you will see my daughter walk right there and come get the cat and let her out of the garage before she starts clawing the door. <laughs> and that's my calico who never 
makes herself seem. You can be thinking, you guys, if you watched me a, about two uh, floss tubes ago, my little white cat, actually she's a big white cat, um, we call her the bleached beached whale. She weighs 13 pounds. Anyway, she's really sick. She's got a cold and she's snuffly and having a hard time breathing. And I took her to the vet yesterday and they gave her a shot of antibiotics. We're hoping that's going to take care of it. And anyway, poor little thing. So back to Every Heart Beats True. We'll be in wide release on May 31st and limited release before that. So, but I will link below where you could go right now and get a copy. If you would like to see this in your LNS or your favorite Etsy shop, let the owners know. And they can order it either directly from me or they can order it through Hoffman or Yarn Tree. And um, so that's that. Okay. Next is my last release for the summer series in the Little House collect, or not the Little House collection, Little Fling collection. And this is August, Little Fling. And you see we've got a wat piece of watermelon and some sunflowers and these little things are supposed to be marigolds right there. Anyway, it's a nice quick stitch. It's done with, uh, DMC, Classic Color Works. There might be some weeks and guest in there. I'm not really sure. General Arts. Um, every one of these has a different, I tr I'm trying to keep the series generally the same, uh, but I'm drawing from lots of different threads for each one of these, and so I forget from one to the next what I chose. Anyway, but it is all a part of the Little Summer Fling series. And this banner was released last month. Uh, and the Strawberry and the Patriotic were really released. I, uh, this is almost two years ago, I think, and this was last year. So... There you go. You can find these in my Etsy store. You can find, and more about Etsy in just a little while. Um, you can find these on my website, all which will be linked before. And then of course, please, please, please go to your LNS and order from them or look for them or just tell them, I want little flings, summer. I want little, I want, who am I? You know, <laughs> I just have to say, about this whole sheltering in place thing. I am beginning to lose track of days, who I am and how to speak English. Just saying. Anyhow, ask for Lou Who Stitches Little Summer Fling Series. And there you go. Okay. So those are my new releases. And um, and I've told you where you can find them. Okay, so we're on to a quick sneak peek, but it's just going to be thread. <laughs> Not going to show you what I've been stitching. So I, you know, when I was talking about whips, I basically have been stitching on Every Heart Beats True. And then my piece that I'm doing all in sulky threads in which there will be a thread pack to go with it. So I am going to show you the threads that I am using for the thread pack. And I'm probably going to be super excited when the thread pack is all ready and I can show you that. So I'm trying to make my computer flat so I can put my threads on there. So there are flowers involved in this and these are the flower colors and then this one these are the flower colors and now you can hear my cat scratching at the door i asked my daughter to please be aware 
and I don't want to yell for her right now, but those were the flower colors. This is the center of the flower. These are leaf colors. And there's a bow involved. And then there's a certain type of fluffy creature involved. And this is what color the fluffy creature is. These are all silky threads. And last time I talked about some of the features of silky thread. Um, this is a 12 weight thread. Oh gosh, I don't know what to do here. Okay, I will be right back. I'm going to move you around so that you can see the rest of my family room. All right, other people do that, right? <laughs> okay, I really hope I'm not nauseating you. Anyhow, okay, so my cord gets, there we go. Okay, we're back at it. <laughs> I hope you're laughing and not going, oh my gosh, I can't watch this woman anymore. Anyhow, I talked about the different features with Sulky, Sulky, and one of the things is the cool way you can um, finish off your thread and store your thread in that the little top here pops up so that you can wrap your thread in there. I should be doing with this with a different color and then snap it back down. So let me do that with a brighter color. This color, it's 1188 red geranium color. <laughs> Just going to say, I love this color. So you pop up the top here. You kind of have to do it in two parts. You can undo your thread and then you can wrap your thread around it and pop it down. And then you aren't getting threads all tangled up. <coughs> in your box or your little baggie or whatever. <coughs> of course I have to cough. Why do I have to cough? I'm afraid to pause this video because I'm afraid that I'll lose everything, but I'm gonna do that. Edit that out. Oh my goodness. Drink some more water. Okay, sorry about that. Alrighty, so where was it? Okay, so that's the deal with sulkies. Um, they'll be in a thread pack that I'm working with Sulky on right now. And then I am going to be taking pre-orders for this particular release. And more about that in the coming days. Anyhow, um, that's sort of the sneak peek. <laughs> it doesn't really show you what the pattern is, but it gives you a little idea. So um, I did have a question last time about sulky threads. And the question was, would you use two threads over a 28 count or 14 count fabric? Um, the kind of the point of working with the sulkies is you only have to use one thread. It's a 12 weight, which means it's heavier than your DMC threads. However, it's not going to give you the same coverage on a 28 or 14 count fabric in one thread, but it's going to be too heavy if you use two threads. And again, the point of using a 12 weight thread is so you only have to use one thread. So I personally recommend that you work on at least a 32 count fabric in order to um, when you're using the sulkies, not in order to do anything. <laughs> when you're using the sulkies, use at least a 32 count fabric. That seems to be kind of ev everyone I've talked to, kind of their thoughts on it as well. So um, that was my one and only question. Yeah. So um, I have been buying things. 
<laughs> oh, I wanted to show you real quick. Here's the card that uh, that the August little fling, tiny fling comes on. Anyway, it was on the pile here. I had to pick it up and show you. So I have been purchasing things. And um, one of the first things I want to talk about is I purchased some fabric, um, probably mostly because it was my sister. My sister has a shop on Etsy in which she sells fabric. And recently, because everybody's making face masks, her business has taken off. And I like, I like to buy fabric. I never do anything with it or very rarely do anything with it, but it's hard not to, hard not to buy the fabric. So I bought two different things from her. One, her, the name of her shop is Quilt Heart. And this is one of the fabrics with the little foxes on it. We have a little joke in the family about a word that be kind of sounds like fox. <laughs> and then kind of this is a coordinating fabric. So I think I might try my hand at making a project bag. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, and then the other, the other one was, oh my gosh, those seagulls and clothes. I think it was Stephanie from Pam and Steph just keep stitching. She was saying something about she loves animals and clothes. She just thinks it's the cutest thing. Anyway, I ordered this and then my sister just popped this in there. Polka dots, the blue polka dots is a coordinating fabric. So I think I need to get busy and try making um, some project bags. But go check my sister's shop out, Quilt Heart. Um, she is in the process of getting lots of cool fabrics. I've kind of been in on the choosing of that a little bit, just a little, not a lot. Um, but she's stocking her store and it's looking awesome. So if you're looking for finishing fabrics or you are looking for fabric to make face masks, she buys high quality quilting cotton and she doesn't sell any cheap stuff. I think she will be looking into selling some other things as well. Some notions, maybe batting, that kind of thing. I don't know if she's actually thought about batting. I need, I need to text her and tell her. Okay, the other purchase I made that I was had fun and, um, oh, I better write this down. So I gotta write quilt heart down. Quilt Heart. These are all people I have to tag. Quilt Heart. And then the other people I have to tag are Starlight Citry. They are a brick and mortar in Corvallis, Oregon, which is just up the road from me about five hours, <laughs> maybe four. Anyway, um, they kind of put a little plea out on social media that they needed some help with people buying things because they needed to make their rent. So when I saw that, I thought, okay, I don't need a lot of excuse to go buy things, but I thought I wanna go in and put a hefty order in for them. So I did and I bought Tiny Modernist Folk Art Sampler. I believe this was her market exclusive it is just adorable. I was thinking I would like to try doing it on the bikini from Avlia and Krista West. That's her name from Avlia. Anyhow, uh, and possibly use a different type of thread that Selkie has. Um, so I'd have to do some color matching. I don't know. I'm not sure Selkie has this really beautiful, deep blue tealy color. So we'll see. Anyhow, I'll have to see what thread that actually is with the DMC. So I got this. And then from Barbie Petal Pusher. Oh, I guess I should take stuff out of bags. Okay, so from Barbie Petal Pusher. 
Barbara Tingley, Barbara Tingley. I got Spring Primrose. I saw this in person. First of all, it's not as big as I thought it was. <laughs> but it's just so pretty and adorable. It's just, I don't know. I, I think the blue might be a little daunting to stitch. But this is done in Weeks Dye Works, DMC, and Gem Arts. And this is all um, DMC. She does give anchor conversions for that. Okay. And then I bought my first ink circles. Hi, Tracy. If you're watching, I don't know if Tracy watches with you. Um, anyhow, I just, I have this thing about the fall when I see the brightly colored trees up against a beautiful blue sky and I just think Tracy has captured this and I I have and I think I have enough of it I have the perfect fabric for this and I am going to uh, someday I don't know when I'm going to stitch these. I mean, you see, I did work on two of my own projects and I barely have time for one, a few stitches in one whip. Then this is just a funny story and it's totally understandable. So I ordered coffee first from Misty Purcell at Luminous Fiber Arts. Coffee first, then the worm. Well, there's more than one a chart out there called coffee first so I got my first package and I got this uh, other chart in it and I'm like I don't think I ordered this I mean I sometimes do stuff and I totally forget what I did and whatever anyhow uh, I'm like this isn't right no I know I ordered, no, I didn't order this one. So I got in touch with them. They were on top of it, totally on top of it. It was just one of those deals where you've got, I mean, it can be hard to name a pattern. And so I, I don't, it's just the way it is. And so anyhow, but they were right on top of it. I mailed back the other pattern. They got this right out to me. And this is so cute, this is so adorable. You can pretty much get me with a little bird, a little chickadee. Because I love chickadees, they're so cute. So this is charted Weeks Dye Works, Crescent Color Works, or Classic Color Works, DMC, and that's it. So, and she gives all her DMC alternatives for fancy flosses. So really cute. Very nicely put together pattern. All of these are really nicely put together patterns. I mean, I wasn't expecting anything less. The other thing that I haven't opened up yet is I got a pair of snips. I think I needed to, I wanted to get to a certain number when I was ordering from Starlight. And this kind of just put me right there. So I got these cute scissors. I guess I should have taken them out. I don't know. It's like bomb proof packaging though, so. But it's got like a really nice little cutout pattern. So I need, I wanted to show you guys and I forgot to, I don't know. I didn't open it up. Okay. So those are, those are all kind of my stitch buys this month. And um, even designers like to buy patterns, even when we have no idea when we're going to have a chance to stitch. Um, a couple of kind of business things I want to talk about. And I understand if you're like, I don't want to hear any more about our business. But these are important to you as a consumer in understanding what happens when you purchase something. Uh, the first thing is Etsy. Um, I like Etsy. They haven't been the best platform. I mean, they haven't been, I shouldn't say that. They haven't been the place where I've found traction in terms of um, my business. However, 
at least I have a place that I can tell people to go and look at my stuff. And initially, that was really important because I didn't want to set up my own website. I now have my own website that I've been developing. You can find all of my products there in PDF form. And of course, all the links will be down below. Etsy has instituted an offsite ab advertising program. And as a maker, you're automatically signed up for that. You don't really get a choice initially. You can go in and unsign up, but um, you're automatically in. Michelle Bendy of Bendy Stitchy actually had someone click on her on the ad that Etsy created for her of her of her item. And then someone purchased as a link, you know, they clicked on the ad, took her directly to her store on Etsy, and then that person purchased something. And I'm sure they're completely unaware. But Etsy takes 15% of the profit from that on top of what they're already taking as a commission. So for an $8 item, they took $1.50. Now think about that. That means she's almost, she's, that's like, that's, that really reduces her margin in, in her, in what she's making. And Michelle, I hope you're okay with me telling that story since you had it out there on stories. So if you see ads for Etsy on Google, don't click on them. Instead, institute your own search, go to Etsy, find what you're looking for, and order directly that way. Otherwise, the person who's taking the hit on that is me, the maker. And when you're not selling a $150 item, that's a big hit. But even if you are selling a $150 item, that's like, uh, let's see. So if you're selling a $150 item, 10% would be $15 and 15% would be $22.50. So $22.50 of that $150 item is going to Etsy. And the reason I bring this up is because small business people, makers, I don't have any employees. M Michelle Bendy Stitchy, she doesn't have any employees, but write her down, I'm mentioning her. Um, neither does the person who makes the $150 vase or the wooden item. They don't probably have any employees either. Makers don't generally get rich. They generally work to support themselves <laughs> doing something that they love doing. And that's a blessing, absolutely a blessing. But I think my point is be aware when you're clicking on things, what might be going on behind the scenes. Okay. And in this day and age, when people are struggling to get by that, I mean, 2250, that could be a bag of groceries. I mean, well, maybe half a bag of groceries where I live, but anyway. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about is copyright infringement. So, I've never been able to explain it very well, but I want to direct you to a gal named Liz, Disney Craft Girl. On That's her moniker on Instagram. She has made a video in which she's done the work and read the law and she explains it for you. So I'm going to put a link down below and she's going to talk about copyright 
with you. And it's really good. It will help you understand what is okay and what is not okay when it comes to sharing and buying and selling patterns. Um, and it's encouraging for a designer because to hear someone, a consumer saying, hey, we need to be careful about this because it's literally when, she, I'm gonna let her explain it. She does such a much better job than I do. <laughs> anyway, click on that link below, check it out. It's not terribly long. I think it's like 20 minutes long, but it's worth the time to understand about copyright. And um, so that's all I'm gonna say about that. All right, so that's pretty much it. That's all I have to say today. Thank you for putting up with me. I hope you aren't nauseated from all the moving around. <laughs> and uh, my kitty is now um, happily laying down on one of my magazines on the couch. At least she didn't choose my needlework. Score. Um, I might be making another video pretty quick here um, just so that I can announce um, more about my um, sulky thread pack and the release that goes with it. And that will probably be a pretty short little video. Anyway, thank you very much for coming by and saying hi. And um, uh, please comment below. Um, if you aren't a follower, please follow and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so that you can be notified when I'm doing a, when I actually get a video up. I'm trying really hard to do that once a month. And tell your friends, come on by, say hi. And next time I won't do quite so bouncy a video <laughs> sitting here on my, in my stitchy chair in my recliner. So thank you so much and ha happy stitching.